Hi, I'm Bob McKenna with Sawmez Kremlin. Today we're talking about setup and operation of the Sawmez Kremlin E-Jet 2 manual powder system. When you first get your system, there will be some assembly required. Uh, for example, the cart comes in, in two pieces. You'll have to put the uh, uh, top part of the cart into the lower part and insert and tighten these uh, two nuts and bolts. You'll also need to install uh, a fitting for your quick connect for your main air supply. The connecting hoses will need to be uh, installed. They're color coded and they're different sizes. Uh, these are spelled out in the uh, operator's manual, the correct placement of each hose. The controller will need to be mounted to the uh, uh, card assembly. And you'll also need to connect your uh, power cord uh, uh, to your gun. Take note that it has a, a pin system. Uh, you don't want to force the connection. There's a little tab that uh, aligns um, with the female side. You also have an arrow indicator on top to give you a reference point for uh, connecting that. Once it's in place, it clicks in and locks into place. The power cord also comes separately and it is simply uh, it's pushed right in. The ground wire needs to be connected. In an ideal scenario, you'd have a separate uh, ground point for your part and for the unit. For our uh, quick demonstration, um, we're uh, connecting them to potentially a common ground, but that's not uh, your normal um, procedure. An ideal ground for your part would be a true earth ground, which is a rod driven into uh, the earth to get the very possible ground you can. Uh, it's really important, the better the ground you have, uh, the better wrap and attraction you're going to have to the part. So uh, very critical to, uh, uh, to have a good ground on your part. Our power is 110 power. The main power on and off button is right here on the back. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Well, let's talk about some of the uh, componentry uh, before we load powder into the system. Uh, this is the powder supply pump. You have uh, three air connections in this area. Uh, the first connection, uh, the red line, is for your powder flow. The air from this line uh, comes across the pump, creates a venturi, and draws powder up through the powder tube. There's an injector here on the back um, that, that pushes the air across this uh, orifice and creates the suction needed. This hose is what I call suspension air. Some people call it auxiliary air or um, atomizing air. What that air is for is it keeps powder moving through the system. Uh, different powders have different specific gravities, or if you have different lengths of hose, uh, particularly longer lengths of hose, you may need more um, suspension air to keep it moving freely through the system. Typical sign of not having enough uh, suspension air is surging at your gun. So if you see that, you'll want to turn this air up. The third uh, air line coming in here is for your fluidization air. The way this is constructed, there's a, a tube inside of the tube. So the inner tube is where the powder is being sucked up uh, through the pump and out to the spray gun. The outer tube has, has this air coming in. It comes down and permeates through this membrane right here, this, this white disc. And what that does is it, it uh, fluidizes the powder right around the intake. Uh, by fluidizing it, it allows us to, to move the powder and pump the powder. Um, we'll talk about the adjustments for that um, 
this may be a spare part that you might want to keep in your toolbox. Uh, over time, it will get powder buildup on it. Pump is very simple. You notice these quick connects are reversed, so you can't get them mixed up. Everything is hand tight. Another toolbox spare part you may want to consider uh, uh, keeping on the shelf is the, the pump insert. Uh, this is a wear item. Uh, it should be completely round. Um, over time, as powder passes through it, it's, it's abrasive and it will wear, wear on it. I've seen it where it's actually worn through. It's worn so bad. Or oftentimes, it'll just, you'll look at it and it'll be out of round, so you'll want to replace it. Um, as well as the uh, little uh, fluidizing membrane here. This pump is just a friction fit. No tools required. You just push it on and bolt in place. Now let's look at the gun. Before we load powder into the system, let's just look at the components of the, the gun. Once again, all hand tight fittings. There's two different uh, nozzle styles that will come with the gun. Uh, one is a flat fan. Looks The nozzle looks like this. It's available in different sizes for different widths of fan. This is kind of the medium uh, fan nozzle. It corresponds with a flat fan electrode. Um, if you look at this, this is where the uh, uh, powder uh, first, first hits on this wedge right there. And this is the electrode. Um, this is where the uh, negative ion field is going to be created out in front of the gun. Uh, for charging the powder particles. When you install this, you want to make sure and align this metal uh, contact point with the uh, uh, metal contact point on the inside of the gun. And it does have a ridge here which makes it somewhat obvious uh, uh, how to align it, but it is important that those two are, are aligned to make good contact. So you're getting the power through the gun out to the electrode. The other style nozzle that comes with the gun is a round uh, style. The round deflectors are available in a, a range of different sizes. Completely depends on what uh, size and type of part you're, uh, you're using. So it's personal preference, and you, you may want to have several different sizes depending on the project that you're doing. Um, and the round uh, electrode assembly is uh, specific to the round nozzle, so they, they don't interchange. But as in the flat band, same thing, you want to make sure the contact points um, line up when you install it. Today we're going to start with the flat band. It's our most uh, uh, common, commonly used. The nozzle has a little uh, cutout in it, matches up with uh, that protrusion, and then you put on the retaining nut. So very simple, very few parts. Um, uh, very few parts you need to uh, keep on hand to keep the system running. One of the features of this gun that uh, a lot of people like is this quick connect fitting uh, for your powder hose. 
It's a new unit, so it's a little stiff. But that's the, the quick connect system. So if you want to quickly change hoses, a lot of people will like to have separate uh, hoses for maybe clear coats, maybe dark colors, blacks, whites. Um, you can use the same hose as long as you clean out very well in between, but you may choose to have separate just to uh, avoid any possible cross-contamination. The other thing uh, that I like about this Quick Connect is it also acts as a swivel. So it takes some stress off the operator when you're getting around complicated parts. So let's get, uh, get started. Uh, well actually, let, let's review the, uh, the control uh, panel function first before we uh, load our powder. Our control panel is very simple to use, uh, it's very intuitive, and with just a very little practice, uh, you can become very proficient at it. This screen here is our main production screen. If you look at this symbol, this is showing us the amount of powder uh, that we're going to send out to the, the powder gun. This can be adjusted either here or also at the spray gun. Uh, we'll, we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, other information that's here is, is telling us we're on the, the round uh, setting. There's four presets uh, on uh, our system. Uh, that come with factory uh, recommended settings depending upon what nozzle and what kind of job you're doing. Um, also if you notice on here this little hand symbol, this tells me that the unit has been manually adjusted from the standard factory presets. Uh, right now it's set up to put out 30 kV and 25 microamps. And then last thing on this screen shows the actual output uh, when you're spraying. If you uh, pull the, uh, uh, once you pull the trigger on the gun, it'll give you an actual reading of, of output. So that's the main production screen. On the next screen, we have our suspension air. Remember we talked about uh, this air line here, and that's the uh, air that keeps the powder moving through the powder line. I usually recommend starting in the, somewhere in the middle and then if you see any surging with the powder you may choose to turn turn this up. But I found uh, somewhere in the middle is a good starting point for, for most powders. Once again we're on the uh, 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 round setting currently we can change um, to our factory preset for flat fan. We can change to a recoat setting or to a metallic setting. This feature can also be done right at the gun. On the next screen, we've got what those presets are. So uh, we feel that a good starting point, in this case for a metallic, 40 kV and 110 microamps would be a, a really good uh, uh, set point. You can change these settings. You can go up and down if, if you're not getting the results you want. But generally speaking, uh, we find these factory presets cover 90% uh, of, of the applications you'll run into. This is simply a, a screen uh, uh, decision depending upon your ambient light in your shop if you want a, uh, a dark or, or light screen. When you first set up a unit, this is important. Um, this unit's available in box feed as we're demonstrating today, hopper feed, or in a cup gun version. Uh, you'll want to make sure that we selected the right um, unit type, in this case box feed. When uh, spraying normally, um, this symbol shows uh, kind of the normal um, operating um, uh, distance. 
In some cases where you have to get up close to parts, for example, inside boxes or uh, pipes or something, um, uh, this, this setting here will delay the fold back and, and keep voltage up to, to get good transfer efficiency. So if you run into a, a project where the gun is having to get closer than normal to the substrate, you may want to adjust that. And now we're back to the production screen. Let's look at how we can make those same changes that we did on the screen on the gun. So if you see, uh, we've got a plus and minus here, that's the amount of powder. You notice on the screen when we turn up the powder, it, it's reflected on the screen here. So very convenient when you're spraying in uh, uh, varying size uh, shapes and sizes of parts to be able to adjust right here at the gun. You don't have to come back to the controller. The other adjustment we have here at the gun is what type um, of uh, uh, nozzle and KV settings do we want. One, butt, one light here on the left uh, is normally for a round, round spray. Click over, the next one is flat fan. Light to the far right is recoat. And it tells you what the factory presets are for that. And then the fourth one, all three lights will come on, and that's for metallics. And, uh, and there, once again, that's what the factory preset is. Um, I think you'll find that those cover most of the bases, but it's fully adjustable if you uh, want to. And in our case, and I find very common, we um, uh, people like the flat fan for, for a lot of projects. Uh, round fan is very good for cylindrical uh, uh, parts or tubing. Um, but I, I, what I've noticed in the field is a lot of people will uh, choose the flat fan. So to make use of this uh, feature here, we've adjusted this manually uh, to a lower KV microamp setting uh, that we can use for getting into tight areas to overcome Faraday cage effect. So uh, a person can be spraying normally on a part and then if they come into a difficult corner you can just easily click over to a lower KV setting. So uh, that's a personal choice. Um, I, I found it to be very effective. Uh, so the uh, operator can easily get into a tight corner to overcome the Faraday cage without coming back to the, the unit. So that's the way we're setting up today.